Hi Libra, this is your weekly reading for December 8th to the 14th. Today, it's a little late, uh, it's December 8th already. I apologize, I couldn't get to you sooner. Stuff came up and I've been busy, but um, as I was planning my weekend here and I was about to head out, I just really felt like I should get Libra out before I go. So here it is. Because of all the things that you guys have been going through, I switched up the oracle cards and I also switched up the tarot decks for um, all of the weekly readings this week. So I'm going to be using the Klimt Tarot for the Celtic Cross and the oracle cards are going to be the Gateway cards, Crystal Healing, Divine Feminine Oracle, Magic of Flowers, Romance Angels, Whispers of Love, and Sacred Traveler. Let's get started. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I really appreciate all of the subscriptions, the comments. Thank you so much. This is a new channel and all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions are very, very much appreciated. Thank you. All right. Let's get started with the Celtic. Now there is a lot of nudity in this deck, not in an obscene way, but in an artistic way. So I'm letting you know before I get started here. <clears throat> Can we please get a Celtic cross? I'll just show it to you. Two of Wands, making a choice here. Three of Swords, Heartbreak, Knight of Wands. Hotsy totsy guy, lack of commitment or information coming in quickly about something that's being created. Ace of Swords, speaking your truth. And uh, having clarity, it's also about victory, but it's also about sword cuts both ways and um, you're cutting off all that doesn't serve you. Then you've got the hermit staying in, not going out, a lot of inner work done, being done, uh, introspection, and nine of swords, sleepless nights, anxiety. On the bottom we have page of pentacles. In this deck it's called knave of pentacles, which is a message as well about some kind of material offer. Okay, so can we please get a Celtic cross for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. They just keep dropping. All right, I'll show you these as well. Ten of Wands, great responsibility and a lot of stress, but it's going to be over soon. Magician, this is about starting some creative project or something, being able to, it's a major arcana card, being able to manifest, having all the... Um, things you need, all of the tools you need to be able to create the life you want. Ace of Cups. You got the Ace of Cups before. Ace of Cups can represent a child, a new romantic relationship, an offer of love, okay? Eight of Swords, restricted in fear. This girl is boxed in. This woman is boxed in by these swords. It's all in your head. Two of Pentacles is about juggling finances and trying to find harmony and balance while things are you know, very busy and information is coming in like crazy. Ten of Swords, the end of something. You got Ten of Swords before as well. It's a brutal end. It's a painful end. And then you have Strength. Strength can be represented by Leo, but it also represents a healing card and it represents um, controlling your own kind of lower nature. On the bottom, again, we have the Hermit staying in. A lot of intersection. Holy moly. Not gonna take all that. A lot of introspection and inner work being done. Keeping counsel with yourself. All right. Can we please get a Celtic cross for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December eighth to the fourteenth? One second. Sorry about that. I had to blow my nose, and I realized I didn't have any of my crystals on. Okay. Again, this is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December eighth to the fourteenth. Oh, and this is a ring my mom gave me. I don't even know what stone it is, but it looks like a, looks like a, you know, bear kind of material, like bear fur or something in the crystal. So thank you, mama. We got temperance, staying home, Netflixing, healing. Okay. Got that before for you as well, Libra. So... 
Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. I want to get a good shuffle in for you guys. And they really did pick, like, more straightforward oracle cards that get to the point. Okay, for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Also with this new moon that just started on December 7th, it's a good time to clear out old energies that don't serve you anymore, okay? Focus more on the new things that are going to make you happy. And that's what's going to be manifesting. This is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Okay, I'm going to pick something because nothing is popping out in a singular way, which is my signal that the shuffle is done. So this is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I will show you those, though. You know what? I'm going to take this as the first card because it's hidden, but I'll show you these, these cards, but we're not going to keep them, okay? So that's your first card in the situation. But we've got Knight of Wands, or the King of Wands. The King of Wands is about... Someone who's manifesting, established, and uh, is a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So, you know what? Before, we got a lot of Knight of Wands action for you. So, this is a King of Wands now. So, someone's stepping up to the plate, it looks like, and uh, leveling up here. It's also, when you have a King, it's about they're more committed. When it's a Knight of Wands, no, no, no. There's no commitment there. All right. Then you have Eight of Swords. Oh, someone's in fear again. But you're manifesting magician. You are empowered here and you have all the tools necessary to manifest what you want. On the bottom, we have three of swords, heartbreak and disappointment and loss. All right. So I'm going to tuck that on the bottom, okay? And this is you in the situation. Ah, oh, king of cups, king of love. Ten of pentacles is your challenge. Nine of pentacles consciously subconscious is the stars recent past nine of cups you got that before too which is strange yay you're moving on to the ten of cups you right now eight of wands yes positive around you two of cups wonderful hopes and fears knight of swords and result queen of swords okay so you know we had aside from these three cards that popped out we had this on the bottom so i am gonna Leave that there, okay? Three of Swords for Heartbreak, Loss, Disappointment. Okay, I'm going to read you the meanings of the cards, and you can tell yourself what that means to you, because you know your situation better than I do, and you can see how it resonates for you, these uh, meanings. I'll try, though, to interpret it in some kind of a story. King of Cups, someone who's committed, someone who's very loving, established, older, could be someone who's married, because it's a king and there's commitment. Whenever you have a king card, they're completely committed. So that's the situation right now. And it could represent your energy. Okay? But your challenge is the Ten of Pentacles. So you have a lot of love there, okay? But the challenge is the Ten of Pentacles is about legacies and inheritances and um, baby, basic, oh, baby. Again, that just slipped out, my goodness. Okay, I, me I meant to say basically. Okay, basically it speaks to, you know, the grandparents in the courtyard with the couple who's married with their child and the dog running and frolicking in the grass. It's about the whole nine yards, the whole deal. The challenge is manifesting this. Can uh, Consciously, you got nine of pentacles, nine of pentacles. Okay, I see an issue here, Libra, because I see these two ladies right next to each other. Now, if there were two cards in the entire tarot deck that's about being single, it's these two cards. This is the Bachelorette and the Bachelor card, okay? Nine of Pentacles, all about being independent, self-sufficient, and on your own. So you are in this kind of mind frame of manifesting a life for yourself, that you don't have to rely on anybody, and you're good. It's someone who's attractive, someone who's got a nice house, nice things, and, you know, they're just very satisfied with their accomplishments. And it's a lot of accomplishments. 
and they're not looking to find someone else to complete them. On the foundation, you got the stars. However, at the, you know, subconscious level here at the foundation, stars are about, you know, it's the star card. It's about a secret, it's a wish, okay, that you're, you have hope for something. Still, it's, it's still there. You're not done. It's also about someone who gets a lot of notoriety, like, you know, attention. And it's a major arcana card. So it's a fate card. Arcana meaning secrets. So let's move on to the minor arcana cards. Now, previously in your other readings, you got like nine of cups as, as your, one of your outcomes towards the end of your outcomes. And I didn't understand it because you had so much loss going on, but somehow you were like getting what you wanted, what you secretly really wanted. So here you are in the recent past. Again, it shows the nine of cups, getting what you really want, your secret wish, the wish like that makes you totally feel like you've got everything. Um, your life is in alignment. And, you know, it's, it's your dream come true. And it's a beautiful car. You can see this. I guess it's a woman in this. But, um, their tummy is certainly full. They're happy. In the recent future, you go to Ten of Cups. So you're leveling up. You go from Nine of Cups to Ten of Cups. There is so much love here, which I'm just noticing right now because I'm so fixated on explanations. You're manifesting the King of Cups energy. You had Nine of Cups in the past. And then now you're going into Ten of Cups, which is the completion phase of these the cups okay it's about complete success complete happiness the rainbow the sun shining and a wonderful life this is how you're feeling and that's amazing it's fantastic i'm so happy but the foundation of how this all came about you know is a three of swords there was a loss you lost something okay but you wished for it to be so that you 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 decided that you didn't want that it could be a it could be a breakup and I see that here with the two single lady cards. Maybe it could be male or female energy, but I'm just saying, regardless, it's about independence. Okay? And all this love that I see here, these emotions, it's not really towards two people. Because you got Nine of Cups is about a dream coming true, and that's very, like, personal. King of Cups is representing someone who's very loving, devoted, committed, um, artistic, and stable and supportive and nurturing okay the king of love but again that doesn't really your challenge is to manifest oh, i get it the, the challenge is to manifest the ten of pentacles because what you really want is nine of pentacles in your head what you're thinking what you're planning is for nine of pentacles okay to go it alone but your challenge is the ten of pentacles because it is a higher level than the nine of pentacles and in the other traditional tarot decks, you'll see like a, a bird coming to the girl who's the woman who's in the Nine of Pentacles card. And it's a call from spirit saying there's more to life than what you've manifested already. So you might be thinking that, you know, you're really doing wonderful in this independent lifestyle. You've got the funds, you've got the means, you've got the support, you're good on your own. You're, you're just very independent and that suits you. But the bird is speaking to something greater call from spirit for something greater to achieve more and that's your challenge is the ten of pentacles okay so then at the you now in the situation it's eight of wands eight of wands is you you're excited as hell about this like you are so excited and enthusiastic about life right now everything is going peachy you're like i got my wish I am so fulfilled right now. I've got like 10 of cups. I am complete. I complete me. I am awesome. Oh my goodness. Look at me. Nine of pentacles. You're high on yourself. Then you got eight of wands. It's love and enthusiasm. That's what eight of wands represents. It's also about messages coming in quickly to you. Wands are again about fire energy like Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Okay. I need a lot of male energy. Now, surrounding you, you got two of cups, the best of partnerships, a union, a couple, a love relationship. Okay, when I look at this picture, I see 
some two people who are in love or who have a partnership. A wonderful one. This is the best of relationships. But you're afraid or you're hoping for the Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords represents somebody who is, first of all, because it's a knight and on a horse, it could be representing information coming in, right? And swords represent the signs of Aries, sorry, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. Knights are people who are generally unattached, not married. Knight of Swords is not someone who's a committed person. Knight of Swords is someone who goes in, you know, when there's some situation going on in the kingdom, the Knight of Swords is the first one out the gate, going out to check and see what's going on, ready to drop, uh, drop and fight at any second, basically. Coming in fast, coming in threateningly, very um, intimidating. Swords can also speak to a little bit of a higher class status. So either you're hoping for someone like this. Or you're... Yeah, I just feel like it's... You're hoping for something like this. Because like... Or you could be afraid that someone is threatening you. That this person is like a little bit like... If you're in a fear mode, someone who's coming at you in a very like menacing way. Where you they, you feel they're dangerous a little bit. But I don't see that in the rest of the cards. So if I was to take it in two ways, one is that you either think this person you're dealing with is someone who's a little bit intimidating or dangerous or unreliable, hot-tempered maybe, or secondly, it could be that you want to hook up with somebody else or you have somebody else on your mind who is more like this, a little bit like more dangerous. I don't know. Then in the outcome, though, you're the Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords is someone who represents like a divorcee energy. Queen of Swords is someone who's seen it all. And they're just like, you know, emotions don't rule their judgments anymore. Now it's not coming from a heart-centered place. It's coming from logic and reason. Queen of Swords has that truth of clarity, the sort of truth and clarity there. She's empowered. She's reached a certain level of status and um, stability in her life. She is definitely not the lovey-dovey married type. Basically, it, it, at the lowest vibration, it could represent someone who's like a little cruel, a little cold, like an ice queen. So from the situation here, you go from King of Cups to Queen of Swords. And there's so much enthusiasm here, but you're still hoping for something. You're still hoping for the Ten of Pentacles. Ah, oh, okay, maybe. Consciously, you think you're going to make the best of it with the Nine of Pentacles situation with being the independent woman, having everything you need. You got something that really made you happy. Although it came from a loss. Then you're feeling completely fulfilled here with the Ten of Cups. Like everything is awesome and great and you've got success and joy in your life. So full of enthusiasm and love. And you've got the supportive, wonderful relationships surrounding you. But you're afraid of someone like this. And then it's going to end up with the, being single again. Alright, let's get some clarifying cards. And see where this goes. First, I'm going to pull. Let's see, what shall I pull first? Let's pull a. Let's pull love cards first. Okay, so with the whispers of love, can we please get one oracle card? Okay, I'm going to show it to you, but that was just from bad shuffle. Speak the language of love. Demonstrate love. Have patience. Okay, so this is a for Libra, please. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Can you please get one oracle card for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th? Okay, that was it. Get to know each other. 
On the bottom, it's focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life. That's number 24. Put it together numerolo numerolo numerologically. It's six. Six is the lovers. Okay. So we have 44 here. Get to know each other. And it shows an older couple. It says learning to meet another's need for love is important for a relationship to grow. All right. And it looks like that. Like this person wants to manifest this. Like that's their challenge. Okay, so Whispers of Love, 44. The need to feel loved and appreciated motivates how we will act in a relationship. Taking time to understand each other will benefit you as you will find that this will only help love to grow. Recognize your differences. And don't try to control every aspect of what is before you. Okay, so as you're getting to know each other, you have to be patient, okay? You have to take time to understand the other person. It's just as beneficial to you as it is to them. So don't try to control every aspect of what is before you because I see this going to like a good relationship, the Ten of Pentacles. I see it going to this, okay, Queen of Swords. When there, there could be so much better, like so much more, unless that's really what you want. But the foundation is, you know why you're the Queen of Swords? Because you're, you're, you're still upset about this loss. Okay, so let's put this here. Next, let's pull a Romance Angels card. Can we please get a card for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th? December 8th to the 14th. And if a card pops out, that's the one I'll take. If not, I'm going to pick one. Okay. Pick one. There we go. On the bottom, we have Again, with the conversations, okay, so heart-to-heart -heart conversations, honestly discuss your feelings with each other. And this, this guy looks a little bit aloof, and this girl looks like she's earnestly trying to explain how she's feeling, and he, he's not getting it. And this other room, the Whispers of Love, speaks to not trying to control every situation and trying to understand each other and, like, having patience. But let's see what this is. Ah, oh, shit unrequited love there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going and you can clearly see in this picture this woman like this guy he's trying to like woo her and to kiss her hand and she's not interested you've got two angels here on his side that are guiding him to pursue her there's one barely like whisper of an image of an angel behind her and they're both looking like mm-hmm I'm watching, it's not quite, like, I'm watching what you're doing because you're doing something, but I'm not engaged and I'm not really interested. So it's not enough love. I'll read it to you though, okay? Okay, so you don't like him, basically. Is that the point? Like, he loves you, but you don't really, you don't really care. You've got other things on your mind. The Romance Angels compassionately bring you this card as an answer to your relationship question. The person you're inquiring about has many qualities that you find attractive. However, there's not enough mutual attraction to create the passion you're seeking. This relationship is more like a cat and mouse chase, with one partner continually retreating and disappearing. Neither person enjoys this imbalance, and lack of chemistry is the reason. You may both share genuine love, which in itself can be a foundation for a long-term relationship. This card comes to you simply to help you understand the missing component which you both can sense. The, your, every relationship is a synergy of blended energies. You can't completely control the attraction factor, but you can override and steer it. Sometimes painful childhood experiences can draw you to unhealthy relationships as you recreate the original situation in an attempt to heal it. 
You can ask the angels for guidance to help you elevate your spiritual frequency so that you attract a partner of a similar nature. You deserve to be in a relationship of mutual appreciation and attraction, so it's worth your time and effort to manifest one with these qualities. Okay, I think I get it. I think I get it now. This is what I'm seeing now. When I see unrequited love and needing to get to know each other, you don't want to get to know him. And I'll tell you why. It's like this cat and mouse game that this card pulls up. It's something where I've pulled up Libra for you guys, like this wands guy, all the time. And I kept telling you, like, you know, he seems like a knight of wands, like he's, like, not committed. But, ooh, he was committed. Basically, it's someone attractive that you were attracted to. And you think they're hot and stuff, but you don't think they're on your level. You know? You want someone of a higher status. You're young, I can tell, because of this. But this has jaded you, this whole situation. So even though he likes you, he loves you, and he wants to try, like, he's all in. In the beginning, you might have been, been concerned that he wasn't committed. And then we talked about this before in previous readings where the guy really actually ended up being very committed. But the thing is, the cultural differences or whatever differences, status differences that you guys have, it's like his good looks are attractive, but when they like speak and you're kind of like, yeah, no, no. And so, you know, something that might have happened and manifested from attraction didn't have the, um, you know, the foundation or the, the solidity that didn't have what it takes to last like in the long run. So you didn't, you didn't want to commit to it. You're the one who doesn't want to commit to this. Because you're happy as a lark now because you're like, you know, somehow your wish came true. Libra. And you want to be single. You don't want to be attached. There was a loss and a heartbreak. You might have cared for this guy. You might have really cared about it. But it wasn't enough to like, you know, if you're young especially, you get attracted to people. You might have been crazy about them, obsessed about them. But then like, you know life happens and then you get a wake-up call you're like oh no 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 i can never do that and then you back it up so it's sad that this thing happened but somehow you had support and you got like you know something that came true for you some wish that came true for you and now you're full of enthusiasm you still have hope to manifest this ten of pentacles somewhere but it's even though he's there and look at how this guy is holding on to the girl right She's kind of looking like she's sad, but he's like, I love you. I support you. But, you know, it doesn't s seem that there's any picture here where there's a girl who's like feeling the same way back. And then you say get to know each other here and there's control issues and the need to get to know each other. Okay. And like this issues arising from not being able to get on the same level as this person and unrequited love. Okay. So let's keep going. Here we're going to go with uh, Sacred Traveler Oracle cards. Let's see what's going on for Libra, please. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Every time, Libra, your readings are so straightforward and easy. The shuffles are easy. The cards make sense. All right. And that really does happen most of the time, but Libra, you guys are like the most breezy one. Okay. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. <clears throat> if a card pops out, I'll take it. If not, I will pick my own and stop. Okay, it looks like we're going to be all day, so I'm going to pick one. For Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th, please. Okay. On the bottom, we have Grace and Gratitude. Through Gratitude, Joy expands. To me, this card, when I read the meaning, basically it's about, like, no matter what, shit hits the fan no matter what things go wrong you are always this kind of person who's always like in spite of all adversity and obstacles always having a positive outlook 
and having grace and having class and being able to um, still find joy and good things and positivity in the midst of like hard times or in the midst of like people like really trying to come at you whatever you're always this kind of person who has uh, gratitude for all of your blessings in life you're always grateful for the good things you have in your life okay so solitude in silence peace prevails and we did remember the cards that were falling out we got hermit twice and I've gotten temperance for you so many times as well. So let's see what solitude is. Solitude. Yes. In silence, peace prevails. A card meaning is in silence, you'll find a depth of self-awareness as well as inner peace. This is not a time to venture forth with a new project or a new cycle. This is the time to step back and be still. In quietude, you can seek and uncover your deepest inner truth. Seek solitude and all will be revealed. No matter what is happening around you, find serenity. That's self-explanatory and that's beautiful. I'm going to leave that over here with solitude, okay? All right, so we're done with that. And I'm going to pick a gateway oracle card. These are the gateway oracle cards by Den Denise Lynn. And the sacred traveler was by Denise Lynn as well. So can we please get a card for guidance for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th? Also, when it says solitude, you're, you're going solo. Look at that. Look, okay. All right. That came out. Planting seeds is on the bottom. Seeds of grace are being planted in the fertile soil of my soul. Okay. Mending bridges. I heal rifts. I am a mender. Let's see what this means. And that just popped out right away for you guys. Gateway cards, mending bridges. Okay, so it means heal old wounds with respect to people and situations. Carefully do whatever you feel is necessary to make amends. You are a mender. Help others mend bridges in their lives. So the universe wants you to know there are times to drop everything and leave. And there are also times to carefully mend bridges with people, situations, and places. This is one of those healing times. Maybe there is a wound inside of you that needs to be forgiven or accepted. Transform the inner grievance. Do it now, for you no longer need to carry it with you. Perhaps there is a person from your past with whom you should reconnect. You know what you need to do. Take action now. Questions to ask yourself is, if there was an area of my life that needed mending, what might it be? What is the first step I need to take toward resolving a current rift I have with someone? Could this card represent something within myself that I need to give attention to or mend? So, mending bridges, okay? So, whatever breakups there are, whatever um, issues or con Don't, like... You know, this thing about, uh, what is it? Burning bridges? So, don't burn the bridge. Don't blow up that bridge. Okay, mend it because you never know how the past is going to come back to bite you in the ass. So mend your bridge. Okay. Um, finally, let's see. There's two more I'm going to do. <clears throat> this is Divine Feminine Oracle cards. This is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. This is my favorite deck. It's by Megan Watterson. For Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Can we please get one goddess or saint or ascended master for guidance for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 8th to the 14th. There we go. Okay, on the bottom we have Yemoja, the goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. Okay, there we go again with the birthing vibe, but I'm not going to get into that. Let's talk about Lalita, the red goddess. Playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. Okay, so if you've been in a dark place, it's about all about being happy. You know, whatever conflicts you're in to 
be lighthearted about it, but I'll read it to you. 88. Okay, so it's about when your soul selects a card, answers arrive from disengaging with the energy that created the problem or question to begin with. We so often hold tight to what we desire with a grip that actually inhibits it from arriving. And we often take the soul by the collar and demand to know the answer right now. But when an answer, when a desire is an imperative, there's an inability to be playful, imaginative, and childlike with how and when that desire will arrive. The secret to desire is holding it lightly. The secret that the Red Goddess knows is that we already have everything we desire. So we can trust that what the soul craves is and always has been ours. This is the levity that sparks a shift in exchange, a change in expansion. This is the moment that we remember we are not separate from what we desire or from the divine. Lalitha is that brilliant moment in a fight between lovers or friends when suddenly someone mispronounces a word and both crack up laughing. She's the levity that comes back when we loosen our death-like grip on what we think we desire. She's the gorgeous, much-needed reminder that we don't have to suffer our way to what we want most. The path to what we desire and to becoming the soul we need to be in order to receive it can be paved with joy, with divine play, and with a sacred process of lightening up all along the way. Soul voice meditation is how can I add more playfulness to my life right now? And the intention is playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. Okay, so lightening up basically, Libra, in spite of what's going on. If you're in fights or conflicts with your partner, it's about, you know, getting, tapping back into that playful energy. Okay, I'm not saying you have to be flirty and stuff, but just like to release some control. There's a lot of control here that you're trying to um, enforce on this other person. And when you don't get it, it looks like you're going to go solo. Okay, so can we get one crystal healing card for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th? Crystal Healing Card for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of December 8th to the 14th. Okay, there we go. Ah, oh, okay. Blue Kyanite, letting go. And then on the bottom, we have Spirit Quartz, music, using, again, when you have this Lalita, you've been heavy, I guess. It's about um, lightening up, using music and stuff to shift your vibration. Like, you know, fun thing, going out dancing, not going out dancing, but, you know, like, kind of self-care. Listening to music that soothes you and makes you happy. Okay, so we have Kyanite Blue, letting go. And it's related to the throat chakra. I love this stone. I, I, I literally have a pile of blue kyanite over here. This will really help you, Libra. I'm just saying, like, out of all the crystals I've ever, like, tried, you know, working with or whatever, this is the first one when I got this blue kyanite bracelet. And when I wore it, immediately, like, within that night when I was sleeping, I felt like a, you know, xylophone, you play it and you feel the vibration kind of like bing, boom, boom, like along all of my chakras. Like I didn't even feel my chakras before I tried that bracelet. So this is what it does. Kyanite aligns your chakras and it helps to speak from your um, throat chakra in an, an articulate, uh, you can't tell right now, in an articulate way and to speak your truth. And to let go of things that you hold in. So whatever you hold in from your speech, kyanite will help you express yourself. Okay? And to release that energy. So let me read it to you, though. I had to give you a little breakdown on it because this is one of my favorite, favorite crystals. And if you don't go to a store to get kyanite or something, you don't come to go to crystal stores, crystal shops, just take a picture of the kyanite. And look at it and try to um, 
just relax while you're looking at it and med do some meditation. It should help. Okay, so it's a uh, blue with strips of silver mika, and it's related to the throat chakra. It deepens self-awareness, extends your consciousness, creating new opportunities in life, allows you to let go of old emotions and thus make way for the new, assists in connecting to your voice with free-flowing expression. So you've drawn this card today to remind you it is time to surrender and let go. As we journey through life, we collect and hold on to belief, old belief systems, ideas, emotions, feelings, and experiences that have hurt or affected us in some way or another. You may be currently feeling held down by old baggage, negative feelings, and thoughts that you have found challenging to let go of. The devas are here to share with you that the past is now behind you and it's time to detach, release, and let go of all that no longer serves you. Oh, you do. Look at those. That's the same sword with the um, Ace of Swords. It's cutting away everything that doesn't serve you. Okay, um, whether it be an old hurt, relationship, job, friendship, or behavior, offer these feelings over to the Crystal Devas as they assist in the letting go process. You are encouraged to work deeply with the Devas of Kainite as they show you how to surrender, let go, and move with the flow. It is time to set yourself free from the old restraints and allow a new, fresh energy into your world. Feel yourself releasing all expectations and control and allow yourself to fly high and set yourself free that was another one libra okay talking about control issues not judging but seriously like when everything is advising you to stop being so controlling because it's going to lead to things that are you know not going to work out so nicely in love but perhaps that's what you want because i'm sensing that too doesn't look like you really care. Okay. So, finally, we have one last oracle card. And this is the magic of flowers. Can we get... Oh, sh did you see... Th oh, damn, that just fell out by itself. I didn't even have to shuffle. Okay, <laughs> and I know this already. Crocus, this is about moving on. This is when two people have been fighting so much that you are in a constant state of, like, fire of how angry and how heated you guys are getting it also speaks to like you've been considering moving to like a colder location crocus even looking at the picture i, I wish i could focus this let me try to focus this because when i watch the videos it never focuses properly all right if you look at this it's about this woman who's there at the gazebo and she's so low Okay, and what was I telling you about Queen of Swords, Ice Queen? This is what happens. It's saying you need to cool down. Whatever you're con trying to control, when it doesn't work out that way, you're going to, like, you guys are fighting. You're quarreling. There's a lot of that. A lot a lot of need for communication, especially with even the Kyanite here, letting go of stuff that you've been holding in. Okay? A need to cool down, not be so hot-tempered as well with all of these control issues. But you got major swords action here with, with like in regards to your hopes and fears situation and the outcome where you're, you're ready to cut off that shit that doesn't serve you any longer. Why? Because you're not over this, this loss, this heartbreak. In other cards, you'll have a heart with three swords in it, okay? About loss, heartbreak, disappointment. So whatever this is that's poisoning the relationship... You're not over it, and it seems like you won't get over it. You can try to mend, it says mend the bridge. This is the advice here. Mending the bridge, let, releasing control and being more like happy and, and, and jokey and relaxed and playful. And getting to know each other, having conversations. Both of these require, you know, conversations and so on, but there's not enough chemistry in the love. That's the issue. And you're going to go it alone, okay? Solitude, finding peace, because there's peace when you're on your own. Because the last thing you need when you are going through something is someone else who's making demands on your emotions and your mind space. Then you need time to just, like, detach and process. So that's your reading, Libra. I hope it made sense. I hope it resonated for you. Have a great week. Check in for your other weekly readings. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Okay? Bye-bye.